Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm going to invite everybody to stand. And we're just going to enter this time of worship. I'm just going to encourage everybody to close their eyes really quickly. And we're just going to take in a deep breath and breathe out. And we're just intentionally right now releasing whatever we came in with, whatever's on our mind, whatever's causing us to feel overwhelmed. And we're going to enter in to this time of worship that the Lord is worthy of. God, we're believing you today that whatever we came in with, you are already working it out. That whatever is overwhelming us, you are already making a way because you are the on-time God, because you have shown up time and time again, right when we needed you, even when we didn't understand God, you are already orchestrating things on our behalf. So we will worship you as such today. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song in faith. Amen. Because we know God is able. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I look back, I didn't think that I would make it. I was sinking, and the shame came like a wave. I just knew that I was too far gone. Then you showed up. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Sing on time, God. On time, God, you love the impossible. On time, God, you love doing miracles. Oh, I see, I see it all now. Higher hand was always working, even in doubt. You were faithful, never failing, even when I thought the darkness won, you showed up. Oh, on time God sing, on time God, you love the impossible, on On time, God, oh, and you always show up. You always show up. We're gonna sing that chorus one more time. On time, God, sing. On time, God, you love the impossible. On. Tomorrow in his hands, and 
watching, keep waiting, keep hoping, keep hoping, keep praying, keep watching, keep waiting, keep watching, keep waiting, keep hoping and keep on praying, keep hoping, keep praying, oh. Keep watching, yeah, keep watching, keep waiting. If you're waiting on God, keep hoping, keep hoping, keep praying. I'll keep on watching and waiting. Keep watching, keep waiting. I'll keep on hoping and praying. Keep hoping, keep praying. One more time, keep watching. Oh. Keep waiting in the name of Jesus. I will pray. Keep hoping. Keep praying. Keep watching. Keep waiting. Keep watching. Keep waiting. Keep hoping. Keep hoping. Keep praying. Cause you're, cause you're not. set to go this morning and we switched it up a little bit because who's happy that there's a God that's faithful Amen. that's on time not on our time but on the perfect time right when we need it and I know that we're in this sermon series even when it hurts and I thought it was really important for our church to go through this through this collection and to talk about pain and talk about the hurts that we experience but that's not the point of the sermon series the point is that even when it hurts god is still faithful Amen. even when it hurts god is still on time yes. even when it hurts god is still doing something yeah. and so this morning can we worship yeah. like god is still doing something in our life yeah. Like we've all heard the phrase before, right? If we have breath, that means God's not done with us yet. Yes. So we're all here this morning. Maybe some of us are online. And this is what I want to encourage you, whether you're in person, whether you're online, don't let what's surrounding you dictate how you worship God this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because you could be watching online from at home and your house could be filled with the Holy Spirit. You could be in your car and somebody could be driving by and see how you're worshiping along with us and be like, I want what they have. So this morning, I'd encourage us, don't take this moment for granted. We have a roof over our heads that we're able to gather together and worship. The weather is 
beautiful outside so you guys can still have brunch after. <laughs> Everyone's looking outside and they're like, yesterday was bad, so today I need to get outside. Trust me, I'll get you out, I promise. I don't have a two hour sermon today. We'll be out at a, at a good time, but can we take this time right now to just glorify God? to just sing it out with everything. Like today may be our last time to worship him while here on earth. Like if we worship like that every time, every single time where we said, God, I am going to worship and nothing is going to stop me. Can we do that this morning? Can we say, okay, God, you know what? I'm going to give you everything I have right now. What do I have to lose? Because I'll tell you right now, you don't have anything to lose. If you just give him a little bit more this morning, I promise you it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. So let's sing this again, and then we're going to praise God. We're going to lift it up a little bit more. We're going to keep on going. But God has something in store for us today. So let's just worship him. Let's give him a clap offering right now. And let's worship like he's really still doing something.
always on time. It doesn't matter what we are facing. It doesn't matter how many times the enemy tries to convince us otherwise. You prove yourself time and time again. And we give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go into our next song. And we're going to continue to lift the name of Jesus up. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure and praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise, I praise when I feel it, praise when I don't. I praise cause I know. You're still in control. Cause praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Oh, my praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. As long, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my. Sing praise, praise the Lord, oh my Sing, I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet My God is alive, how could I keep it inside? Praise, praise the Lord, oh my soul you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody. One more time I I praise cause you're sovereign. Oh, oh, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
God, we could be, we could be in the hospital right now. God, we could be sick. We couldn't be able to speak. There's so many things that could be happening, but you gave us breath in our body. Lord, we are grateful that we are standing here today, all because of your faithfulness, all because of your resurrection power. God, I pray that we would always praise you and lift up your name. No matter what we're facing, even when we find ourselves in sickness, even when we find ourselves struggling, God, may we still muster up the strength by the power of your spirit to lift up your name because you are always worthy and you inhabit the praises of your people. So when we praise you, God, your spirit moves in our situation and that is why we praise you. God, we lift up your name today. Hallelujah. How many of you know we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? We don't just come here just to be cute on a Sunday just because it's something that we do, but it is a way to honor God just one more time again throughout our week because he is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. to lift him up as we sing this song. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. There was a moment when lights went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history oh there on the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake, hallelujah, and the veil was torn. And what a sacrifice was made as the heavens roared. Sing all hail, all hail, King Jesus.
Say hi to somebody next to you. I'm going to have Sarah come up. She's going to give us a few announcements real quick. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone online. It's so great to see you on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Welcome to church. Um, here at the Church, we have amazing groups. You can definitely check it out on our website, isochurch.org, and you can find more information about each group that we have. We have groups happening throughout the whole week, so please get connected. Um, on your seats, you actually have a connect card, so please fill it out. If you are new, we would love to get to know you and connect with you, and you can drop it off in the black ties and offering box. If you're online, please go to isochurch.org and click connect and fill that out, and you get a free digital gift from us to you. Also, there are some amazing upcoming events. For the ladies, we have our the women's, uh, women's ministry Rise Meets, Bi-monthly, so the next event is Rise and Relax on Saturday, April 27th at noon, meeting in Van Sun Park here in Paramus. Bring some goodies for a picnic, and let's relax in God's word and community. Reach out to Pastor Crystal for more information. We have another upcoming event, Sunday, April 28th, uh, Coffee with a Cop. It's a special service where a police department is going to come here and share with us. We can't wait, so please invite family and friends. Also, we have our, on the last month, 
Um, on Mondays at 6.30, we are meeting on Google Meets. Please join us so we can get together and just pray and just fellowship and prayer and just commune with God. And let me tell you, it's such a great time. So definitely encourage you guys to come out. Here at the church, we believe that generosity is our greatest opportunity. So you can give different ways. You can give by dropping your tithes and offering in the black tithes and offering box. You can also give by texting 84321 and give automatically. Or you can go to ISO Church and click the giving tab and you can give that way. Let's bow our heads. God, thank you so much that we get to be in your presence, Lord. Thank you for loving us and choosing us, God. God, you're so amazing. God, if we did something today, that you just please forgive us. God, um, I just pray for anyone who is not feeling well right now, Lord, or those who are in the hospital, God. They just heal their bodies right now from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God. You are the greatest physician, and we can always come to you with our petitions and our desires and our dreams, God. God, I don't know, right now I feel just... Um, just to pray for people who are here right now, people who are online, God. They just watch over each and every one of us, Lord. God, we see so much that's happening in our world that we see that you're coming soon, Lord. Let us not forget that there are so many people who are lost, God. Let us be able to strive to just spend time with those people and just talk about how amazing you are and who you are, Lord. And let us not miss out on the time that we get to be with you and live in eternity in your, in your presence, God, and just worship you all the time. Just like how we're worshiping here, Lord, but we're going to be worshiping with you forever and ever and ever. And we love you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And kids, you are dismissed. Amen. 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 Who's happy to be in church today? Woo! I know I am. It's been a great service so far. Um, I'm just really expectant this morning. I don't know about anybody else, but I really truly believe that God wants us to hear something today. He wants us to learn something today. So we are uh, in this collection of talks titled Even When It Hurts, and we kicked it off last week. It's a four-week series. And uh, this collection, I was just really reflecting and thinking about where we wanted to go in this year. And you know, I had another sermon series lined up, and God was just putting this on my heart for a few months. So because I'm the pastor, I get to move stuff around. And so uh, we bumped this up to the front and I thought it was really nice to go into directly after Easter and after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But, you know, I really do believe that God wants to do something in us and he wants to restore us. And so Psalm 7120, it's our core verse for this collection. We looked it over last week with our first installment in this series and it was also the title of the series even when it hurts but it's up on the screen right there and it says you have allowed me to suffer much hardship but you will restore me to life again and lift me up from the depths of the earth and the premise of this collection the premise of this sermon series is that all of us experience hardships all of us experience hurt but the greatest part about it is God is still faithful and God is still good and he is still there for us even in it. And so today I want to preach from the topic, hurt people, hurt people. A cliche phrase that I feel gets thrown around a lot, but as cliche as it is, it's also true. Hurt people, hurt people. And so uh, we can grab our Bibles and let's turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, or I'm sorry, chapter 7. That would have been interesting because I would have been reading from one thing and you guys would have been somewhere else. But Jeremiah chapter 7, I have one quick verse that's going to be up there, but I'm going to give you guys a little excerpt before that. Um, so I'm just going to read verses 5 through 10 from the New Living Translation. Uh, and this is the Lord talking to Jeremiah and he is going to bring this message to his people and so it says there, in starting at verse 5, But I will be merciful only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. Only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows. Only if you stop your murdering, and only if you stop harming yourselves by worshiping idols. Then I will let you stay in this land that I gave to your ancestors to keep forever. Don't be fooled into thinking that you will never suffer because the temple is here. It's a lie. Do you really think you can steal, murder, commit adultery, lie, and burn incense to Baal and all these other new gods of yours? And then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe only to go right back to all the evils again. 
And now I'm jumping down to verse 19, which we'll kind of focus on a little bit. And this is what the Lord says. I am I the one they are hurting? Asked the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. Let's pray today. God, thank you so much for your word that it still speaks to us today, that is still living and breathing, and that we can connect with you in so many different avenues, God. Speak through me. Let it be your words and not mine, and let us just open up our hearts and minds and spirits to receive all that you have for us today. We love you so much. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I was... Thinking about this phrase, and I have a really great quote, and Damon, let's give a round of applause for Damon. He's doing all the visuals and the sound today. We appreciate it, but, you know, we'll shout them out because they only usually get looked at when things are going terribly wrong. So, uh, but we have a quote that I just want to throw up on the screen real, real quick. Damon, if you could do that for me. And this, uh, this quote, I was looking up, this phrase, hurt people hurt people, right? And it's not directly in scripture, I know that, and I try to get some titles to try and connect with us, but I was looking up that phrase, hurt people, hurt people, and this quote came across, and I want to read it for you guys, and this quote comes from Yehuda Berg, I may be butchering that, but he's a contemporary Jewish rabbi and an author, and he said this, he says, hurt people, hurt people, that's how pain patterns get passed on generation after generation after generation. Meet anger with sympathy, contempt with compassion, and cruelty with kindness. Greet grimaces with smiles, forgive and forget about finding fault. And I thought about this phrase, and I thought about this collection that we're in, and this question that I posed to you guys last week, but even when it hurts, how are we going to the Lord? Even when it hurts, how are we approaching our relationship with God? And the way I've looked at it, and this is a short little collection that we're going to be in, only four weeks. You know, we've done some that are eight weeks, ten weeks, but it's four weeks. Next week, we're going to be talking about church hurt. And, you know, but I really thought about this phrase, hurt people hurt people. Because as Christians, as believers, you know, we will experience pain, we will experience hardships. And more often than not, it's from another human being. It's from somebody that we may have been close with. It's from somebody that's a family member. It's from somebody that, you know, is a really close friend or used to be a friend or whatever it may be. But, but more often than not, we project this on to our relationship with God. We go, oh, we're hurt and maybe they were a Christian or maybe they say they're a Christian. Well, God, if they're a Christian, how can they do that? Or, you know, why do... Why do bad things happen to good people? Because hurt people hurt people. And so today, I want us to look at what it means from that phrase, hurt people hurt people, and how we can notice it, how we can notice, notice the hurt in somebody, but then also how we can just acknowledge it and help people through it. Because listen, all of us are gonna experience pain. All of us are gonna get hurt by somebody, but it's how we make our decisions. Are we gonna hurt somebody else or are we gonna help them along? That's why I love what that verse said. Am I the one they are hurting, asked the Lord? Most of all, they are hurting themselves to their own shame. I look at what he's saying in those verses that I read earlier, verses five through 10, and I really believe like the Christian church can be like that today. I'm not saying all of us are in here and we're all murderers and we're all stealing. No, but listen, we have replaced God with other things. We show up and just assume, oh, because I'm checking my quota for the week, I'm a good Christian. That's not how it works. And what ends up happening is because we think we're doing things the right way or because we think, oh, I'm not hurt. I showed up to church this week, so I'm good. What really ends up happening is we are hurt and we're walking around and then other people are getting hurt because we think we're okay. And so what I want us to do is not only notice how to see hurt in other people that hurt people, but how we can see the hurt in ourselves. Because when we see the hurt in ourselves, when we can start things with us, we control what we do. We can't control if somebody else is hurting somebody else. We can give advice. We can share, 
but we can't control what somebody else does. But if we notice things in ourselves, that, be, that can be the start to true change. And so the first thing today to acknowledge and understand that hurt people hurt people is we need to understand that hurt people carry hurt with them. The reason hurt people hurt people is because they carry the pain they are experiencing from previous encounters. And so what ends up happening is we have these previous encounters, we have these moments of hurt, we have these moments of pain, and then they're not being acknowledged, they're not being associated with what's actually happening and then we go and we encounter all these other people and we're carrying all these different hurts with us and you know I really thought about oh can I have like an analogy maybe I'll you know get like backpacks and luggage and do all this stuff and be carrying stuff around but then I ended up actually hurting my arm this week and listen I pride myself on being the greatest father in the United States of America, okay? <laughs> and so this week, what ends up happening is um, Crystal is out and about and she's running around doing something. So I was like, I'm the greatest dad in America. Yeah, I'll watch G for two hours. I'm good. She just fed her. I was like, I'll burp her. I have a bottle. One thing leads to another. Crystal's out a little bit longer than I had hoped. And so I'm like, Baby, I only had one bottle and I'm trying to work at the same time. And so I'm working and I have my mouse in my right hand. So I'm holding her in my left hand and time is passing by because I'm working and like paying attention to her. I'm not paying attention to how long I'm holding her. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, my bicep and tricep is giving out on me in the middle of holding my daughter. And I'm like, I'm a man. I'm the greatest father in America. This doesn't happen to the greatest, the greatest father in America. So my bicep is hurting, my tricep is hurting, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on? I transition her to the other arm, so now I've been holding her in my right arm for the last like two days, because I'm like, I can barely lift my arm up, like this hurts right now. And then what do I do, being the greatest father in America? I go and golf yesterday. Oh. <laughs> with my arm hurting, with my shoulder hurting, and I go out there and I'm like, all right guys, like let's do this, and next thing I know, I'm like, Man, I don't know what's up with my golf swing today Why I'm not hitting the ball like I usually do. Like, I should be playing in the Masters this weekend, but I, I think it's just because of my arm. And I end up carrying this pain into my game. But then on top of it, I end up playing for three hours yesterday. So I play my nine holes. It's fun. I'm connecting with some guys in, in my town and trying to build some relationships and... I get home and Crystal's like, hey, yeah, so you've been gone for three hours, so time for you to take the baby again. And I'm like, yeah, but, and literally like, I can barely lift my left arm. So what I ended up realizing was, I carried that hurt into my golf game. I didn't do anything about it when it first happened. I was just like, oh, I just transitioned her to the other side because I'm the greatest father in America. So instead of addressing it of, hey, maybe getting the massager, putting the massager on it, getting some ice, whatever, maybe getting a heating pad, transition her to the other arm, then I go and play golf for three hours, and then I come back, and now I can barely hold her in my left arm. I can barely put the diaper on with my left arm. I'm doing all these things, and all the things that I'm called to do is hindered because I didn't address the hurt to begin with. And then not only did I not address the hurt, but then I carried the hurt with me to other areas of my life. And so now, instead of me being at peak performance everywhere, I'm now hindering everywhere because of one little hurt. And you can hear my daughter making little grunts in the back because she's like, yeah, I've been stuck on the right side for the last like three days, what's going on? But hurt people carry hurt with them. And so what ends up happening is some of us will get hurt and we'll just transition it to somewhere else. We'll get hurt and we won't address it. We won't acknowledge it. And then what we end up doing is we go into different walks of life. 
We've been hurt in previous relationships, but I don't want to be single. So we carry that hurt into another relationship. We carry that hurt into another relationship. And then we look back and there's carnage behind us. And we're like, well, what happened? Why aren't I married yet? Why aren't I in a relationship yet? Why is this happening? Some of us, we don't know how to handle our finances. And so we're spending money on this when we should be, you know, really stewarding what God has given us. And so instead of having all the finances in order, and instead of giving the correct way, and instead of, you know, sometimes maybe blessing somebody when God's putting them on our heart, we carry it with us and we carry it with us. And then all of a sudden when the debt starts piling up, well, when did this happen? All of a sudden when our credit score doesn't look good, oh, well, how did this happen? It's because we're not addressing things and we're just carrying hurts from one place to another. And so if we want to know that even when it hurts, God is still good, we need to first acknowledge that hurt people carry hurt with them. Hurt people are experiencing hurt. And then what ends up happening is it's not usually just one thing. It's usually one hurt and then another hurt in another area. And like I said last week, when we don't address hurt, what ends up happening is it hinders all of the other places. And we overcompensate because we're, we're experiencing pain in one area. So what ended up happening yesterday, because my arm was hurting, I was swinging the golf club a little differently. And so the, things, and so the places where I was like, oh, you know, I, I think I have a good shot here. All of a sudden, I'm overcompensating a little and I'm hitting the ball differently and it's going off into the woods. Or maybe it's going into the water. Or it's going not the place that I want it to go. And listen, I'm not saying I'm a perfect golfer. I'm not saying I'm even that good. In most people's eyes, I'm probably terrible. But I know I'm better than how I played yesterday. And what ends up happening is we start looking at our hearts and we start saying, well, is this really me? You know, I'm really starting to define myself by the pain that I'm experiencing. I'm carrying this hurt with me. And so all of a sudden now, I'm not just Chad. Now I'm Chad, the not perfect father in the United States of America because I have a her arm. Now I'm Chad, not the best husband because I can't do everything I want to do. Now I'm Chad, not the best pastor because I'm hurt and I can't do everything that I want to do. And we start labeling ourselves and carrying these hurts with us and they pile up and it's not just in one area, but it's in a bunch. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is, like I said last week, there's a difference between being hurt and injured and so what ends up happening is all these little hurts start building up and we end up becoming injured because we never address the hurt. And that's the second thing today. Smaller hurts always lead to greater hurt. Smaller hurt always leads to greater hurt. And this is the thing about sin. Sin, we think it's, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, it's just a little lie. Oh, well, you know, I just took a little bit. Or, oh, well, you know, I just looked at them a certain way because, you know, they look really good. And we, try to, we try to explain it to ourselves as to why it's not that big of a deal when it's really a big deal. Because with hurt, with pain, with sin, we think it's something little, but when we don't address it, and it's that little thing, it ends up becoming blown out of proportion and something out of our control. I'll read verses five through 10 again, just real quick. But I will be merciful only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. So right there, the first thing that the Lord says, if they stop their evil thoughts, so they haven't even acted on some stuff yet. The evil thoughts, then the evil deeds. Start treating each other with justice only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows. How many of us will raise our hand if I'm like, how many of us are exploiting people that are less fortunate than us? None of us want to raise our hand, right? But 
Some of us actually are. Only if you stop your murdering and only if you stop harming yourselves by worshiping idols, then I will let you stay in this land that I gave your ancestors to keep forever. Don't be fooled into thinking that you will never suffer because the temple is here. It's a lie. Do you really think you can steal, murder, commit adultery, lie, and burn incense to Baal and all those other new gods of yours, and then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe, only to go right back to all the evil things again? And that right there, that last sentence, Stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe. And it's not because God doesn't want to keep us safe. It's not because God doesn't want us to experience, like, to experience his glory and his presence. It's not because God's not doing something. It's because we're doing the wrong thing. It's because we're hurt. And it's because we're carrying that hurt with us. And like I said last week, and I'll say it each week, I'm not discrediting the hurt that you're experiencing. I'm not saying that your pain is not something that is acknowledgeable. No, there's a reason we're doing this collection. It's because we all experience hurt and we all experience pain. It's because I know in the future we'll all experience it at some point. So I'm not discrediting it. I'm not saying that you're not going to go through things. But what I am saying is don't blame God when you're putting yourself in a situation that you were never meant to be in. Amen. Preach. Preach. Amen. Amen. Because hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is we carry these things into our daily life with our relationship with God. But we don't actually say, God, I'm hurting. Please take this. It's, well, God, why aren't you doing this? God, why am I experiencing this? When all he's saying is, if you'll just give it to me. Yeah. Stop pretending like you want to give it to me. Stop pretending like you don't want to be hurt and actually give it to me so I can take the hurt away. Don't come in and pretend that we're safe. Because I can tell you right now, the enemy does not care. He wants you to think that you're safe. Because when we think we're safe, when we're actually hurt, we're hurting ourselves that much more. Hurt people hurt people. Crystal knows when I'm different. She knows when something's off. She knows when she's like, hey, I know you're tired. Like, what's going on? I know you're in pain. What's going on? Because that proximity, that relationship. I would like to think that when, with all the relationships that we've built here, that when someone comes in and you just have a certain look on your face or you can just tell by their mood or you can just tell by something that they're saying like, hey, what's going on? Because I don't want it to be that I'm walking into the room with my hurt and my pain and I'm projecting it onto you. Not just as your pastor, not just as a leader, but as a friend. And so often what ends up happening is we carry the hurt with us and then we don't address the hurt when it's small. The hurt when it's simple. Like Jimmy's a doctor, he can tell you. People will look at something and they'll be like, it's not a big deal, I'll address it later. And they come in and they realize they're way more sick than they actually were. Oh, you know, it's just a little bruise. It's just a little broken bone, but you don't know what's happening underneath the surface. And so something that was small and manageable, something that it could be as simple as, God, listen, you know, I had the money to tithe this week. I'm sorry. I, I, I put it to something else. But here, I'm, I'm putting my foot down. I'm giving this to you right now. 
That could be something that could shape your future and your forever by just one simple decision of addressing it when it's small. Because if we don't address it when it's small, smaller hurt always leads to larger hurt. It always leads to greater hurt. It always leads to greater pain. And so the reason that we're doing this collection, the reason that we're doing this sermon series is so that we can say, hey, listen, we know that there's pain. We know it's there. We're providing a space for you to address it so that it doesn't become something bigger and it doesn't balloon into something greater and that we're not picking up the pieces after everything has grown so far out of proportion. How many of us have ever seen those shows where it's like Dr. Pimple Popper, right? And some people walk in with some of these nasty behind things and I'm like, dude, you have a thing on your head that's the size of my head. How are you just now addressing this? I'm like, you could literally draw a face on that and somebody would think you're a Siamese twin. <laughs> like, it's, it's true. Like, we really walk around with all this hurt. That's true. And something that could be so small. Yeah. And it's not manageable in our own strength, but it's by giving it to the Lord and that's the thing because I'm not saying, oh, address it when it's small because you can handle it yourself. No, that's how things get larger. Right. But when we acknowledge that we're carrying the hurt with us, when we acknowledge that somebody around us is carrying their hurt with them, we can go, listen, let's talk about that right now. Maybe when God puts somebody on your heart, shoot them a text, give them a call. Maybe there's a reason for it. And listen, you may not feel like, you know, they're so long-winded and they talk all the time. And I have stuff to do today. And I know I'm going to give them an hour, but they're going to go for two. But maybe there's healing in it for you, too. Amen. Maybe there's a reason for it for you, too. Smaller hurt always leads to greater hurt. And the worship team can make their way back up. Because I really believe that we try to do things in our own strength. We try to do things and then we go, well, you know, my decisions that I'm making aren't affecting somebody else. Hurt people, hurt people like, oh yeah, I hear it all the time, but like, that's not me. And we never think we're the cause of something. We never think we are a part of the root of the issue. But when we're not acknowledging our own pain, our own hurt, trust me when I say you will hurt somebody close to you. And it may be something so simple as like you snap at your significant other. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? But it's because you've been bottling this up for so long. You're making decisions without them. You're going, well, you know, I said I, I said I was gonna, I said I was gonna go to church today, but I'm not really feeling it. But if you don't go to church, the rest of your family doesn't go to church. Right. Like we are trying to set ourselves up where. We've addressed like our friends and our circles and our relationships and everything here at ISO Church plenty of times. If you don't think that what you do affects the people around you, you are sadly mistaken. Right. And you may think that, oh, what I do is small and ins insignificant and compared to, you know, what everyone else has going on. Like their life is so good. They just got a house. Oh, their life is so good. They just had a baby. Oh, their life is so good. They just got engaged. Like, huh. Whatever I'm experiencing right now is so insignificant to what's happening in my group. And sometimes all they want is just to hear what's going on in your life. I tell people all the time, like, I pride myself on what I'm saying. Hey, I'm going to pray for you. Like, I'm actually going to do it. 
And I know that there's some people, like some friends, if I know, hey, I need you to pray for me for this, I don't even need to go into details, but I know that they're going to pray for me. And I know that there's other friends, and I'm like, hey, can you pray for me? I know that they're completely not acknowledging it as soon as the conversation's done. But don't think you are so small and insignificant that God does not want to do something in your life and God does not have a plan and a purpose for you. And God wants to take you through the hurt and take you through the pain and help you heal. And this is the last thing today, and I read Jeremiah 7, 19 again. Am I the one they are hurting? Asks the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. And this is the last thing today. Understand that God hurts when we hurt. And I'm not saying it's a physical pain. I'm not saying that God is no longer perfect. No, I'm not saying that, but he experiences Pain when we're not growing closer to him. He hurts when we're separated from him. And when we say hurt people hurt people, we're the ones that end up hurting God because we aren't acknowledging the relationship and what he did for us. Because he's saying, this is my child. I don't want to see them hurting anymore. I don't want to see them in pain anymore. I don't want to see them focusing on that anymore. I want them to walk into the freedom that I am giving them. I want them to walk into the land that I gave their ancestors to keep forever. I want them to be in eternity with me, but they won't even address their own hurts. They won't address their own pain. And they walk around and think that they're not hurting people around them. But hurt people hurt people. Am I the one they are hurting? Asked the Lord. Most of all, they are hurting themselves. They are hurting themselves. Jesus was a perfect example. He knew what was going on with his disciples. He knew what was going on with the guys around him. He knew what was happening when he was going into Jerusalem, when he was going into the different cities. And he asked God, is there any other way? But he knew that he needed to go up on the cross. He knew that he needed to die for all the hurt, for all the pain, for all the discomfort. Whatever it is that we may be going through, whatever it is that we're going to go through, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, Jesus went to the cross for it. Jesus went and he experienced hurt. Why? So that we could not say, God is just floating around up there somewhere and he doesn't know what I'm going through. But Jesus came down to this earth to make sure that we knew Understand that God hurts when we hurt. He knows what we're going to experience. He knows the pains that we're going to have. And through this whole collection, I hope we can understand that God isn't putting you through something that you can't handle, but that there is a purpose behind it. There is a reason that something is happening. And God is not inflicting pain on you. He's not causing pain. But what he wants is for you to give it to him. He 
He doesn't want us showing up anymore and just saying, we're safe just because we showed up. Only to go right back to do all these evils again. And you may think it's not a big deal. You may think it's not that much hurt. You may think, well, some people go, well, you know, I'm not injured yet, so I'm good. Oh, well, it's not that bad yet, so I'm good. Oh, well, you know, I've already invested too much into this, so I can't stop now. Am I the one they are hurting? Ask the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. Hurt people hurt people. But heal people help people. Amen. And so I don't want it to be that we're walking around hurt people hurting people anymore. I don't want it to be that we're pretending like we're not the ones that are hurt ourselves. Oh, we're saying what that person is going through, it's not affecting me. No, it's affecting you. Listen, hey, you may not be the person that's hurting right now, but you're being affected by the person that is. Understand that God sees you. He notices you. He cares about you so much Amen. that he doesn't want you to stay hurt. And so what he did was he sent Jesus down to this earth so that we didn't have to stay in that hurt any longer. So the worship team does can start playing. I'm just going to ask us to just close our eyes, bow our heads for a second. Maybe some of us have walked in. Thinking that there's no way to get through this hurt, to get through this pain. You know, each week here at ISO Church, we give the opportunity for people to accept Jesus, but I want to phrase it a little differently this week. And if we want the hurting to stop, we want to just have Jesus come into our life. We just shoot our hand up real quick. And I'll tell you, I'm walking in with some hurt. Because we don't want to be a hurt people that hurt people. But instead, can we say, God, can you heal me so I can help people around me? If that's you and you just want to be healed from whatever hurt that you've walked in with today, can you just shoot your hand up real quick? And say, God, I just want to help people around me. you see those hands that are lifted up God you know the hurts that we're walking into the room with you know the hurts that we have when we're watching online you know the pain that we're experiencing but God I pray that we can just give these things up to you right now so that, so that we don't stay hurt but that we can be healed and we can help those around us because we acknowledge and we know that hurt people hurt people. We don't want to just show up and say, oh, I'm safe. But we want to know that we've given these things up to you and know that we are protected and safe through you. Not through anything that we've done, but through you. 
that we'll have faith and we'll trust that whatever it is that we're going through right now is temporary, is small in comparison to everything that you have in store for us. And that we know that there is a purpose and you are walking us into your glory and eternity with you. God, we just thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we stand to our feet? We're going to just close out with this song. But I'd encourage you, a lot of us have raised our hands this morning and we want to be healed from some things and we want to be no longer walking in the hurt and walking in the pain. The first step is acknowledging it in yourself. But allow God in and watch how he not only heals you, but helps you with the people around you. So if we're going to worship and we're going to praise God, I'd encourage you to you know, lift up your hands, connect with him. Even this morning, don't leave the same way that you walked in. Let's worship him this morning.
Yeah, I'm good.